it seems to me that much of the heart of your thinking is is that the very images that seem so horrible and horrific to us that we don't want to look at are the are the deepest most powerful images yes, the yes. image of the gorgon who 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 turns men to stone if they should mm -hmm. only look at their face yes the gorgon we know her mostly through the figure of medusa although she's found for example in mexican mythology in the figure of quatlique mm -hmm. so the gorgon we know her as a moon goddess who had hair of snakes who turned men to stone. But what does it mean to be turned to stone? It really means that you've died, that you've gone back to being bones, you're returned to the mother. And this is a culture that, yes, is an extraordinary denial of death. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to look at what we have, I think in a, in a racist metaphor, deemed as dark, yes. deemed as forbidding. Mm -hmm. We've tried to say that women only have truck with the powers of life, with nurturance. The Gorgon and the crone those kind of figures are here to remind us that no, women have much to do with the powers of death and that we need to, that whatever we repress will inevitably return to us. For example, nuclear waste. Yes. Well, one of the fundamental mythological structures, I think, of, of modern culture and Western culture in general is the idea that uh, to move away from the darkness and toward the light is, yeah. is good, that this is Isn't like moving <laughs> into the heavenly realms. It's, it's more spiritual. Yeah. And, and yet there's a whole set of traditions that suggest that no. spirit resides in the darkness. Absolutely. The, the universe is made up of what scientists now call dark matter. This is the black Madonna or the dark mother that ancients talked about forever, right? Matter and mother are from the same Latin root. Mm -hmm. And yes, um, it's, I find it terribly ironic that in a culture that seeks illumination and sees all divinity in the light, that's the culture that created the atomic bomb. Yeah. That's the culture that's now finding itself fried by the ozone hole. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think we better begin to avert our eyes and institute some reverence for mm -hmm. the so-called dark powers. In other words, if we're afraid to look at, at, at the darkness, at, at the demonic, uh, it, it becomes a subconscious force within us uh, that we're not even aware of. Yeah, and, um, and we are completely out of balance. And I think that's where the fates come in as well. The fates are here to restore balance. Mm -hmm. Balance of all kinds. Balance in the, the distribution of wealth in the world, which is about as skewed as it can get. The distribution of education. The distribution of what we call power, mm -hmm. which is energy capacity mm -hmm. to affect one's life. So the fates are here. You know, the fates are about restoring that balance. And it's inevitable. Yeah. The fates also tell us that the reason I think of the fates of the earth rather than the fate of the earth is because the fate of the earth implies that man, and I use that pseudo-generic deliberately, somehow holds the fate of the earth in his hands, his probably military hands, right? Mm -hmm. As if we're the powerful ones, as if we're the ones who are the dominant force in the universe. What nonsense. That's a reversal mm -hmm. when we talked about that. I mean, we, I mean, all this talk of saving the planet, I mean, we need to save ourselves. The earth will survive us for a long time. Actually, some of the changes that are experienced right now might be her way of shaking us off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if, if I hear you correctly, then what you're saying is that the, the modern mythological system, which seems so off-balance, so skewed, so one-sided, mm -hmm. uh, is intimately linked with, with the uh, skewed qualities of our own culture, which yes. have put us in a very precarious right. situation. We're, we're on the brink of, of all sorts of potential disasters. Uh -huh. and, and you're saying they didn't just happen by accident. No. They, they developed over thousands of years and are responsible, uh, or let me put it a, a different way, uh, that, that perhaps we could hold responsible the, the mythological systems that are dominant today. Well, hold responsible is a dialectic. You hold responsible the, the people who promote those mythological systems as well, but also it gives us a way out. If we look at the mythological system and we realize that this is constructive reality, we can turn that to our advantage and become psychic activists in a way we could call it, generating myths and symbols that challenge that reality, that transform that reality. I like your term psychic activism. It's, it's one that uh, I've, I've been fond of for a long time. But you also write about the, the notion of psychic numbing and, yes. and that we live in, a, in an age uh, in, in which we tend to numb ourselves to the, mm -hmm. the horrible realities around us. Right. Uh, yeah, we do. We, we seem to fragment our psyches mm -hmm. and not allow a dose of reality in. We desensitize ourselves to whatever kind of atrocities are going on, to the environmental. It's, it's, a, it's an insidious process. It's almost like radiation in a way in that you don't see it, sense it, taste it, smell it. It just kind of creeps up on you. And I see all sorts of evidence of psychic numbing. But I would say, yeah, we need to 
respond to that with developing psychic sensitivity, which are the basic powers of our bodies, mm -hmm. which again have frequently been denied in this culture. Mm -hmm. What you seem to be saying then, and, and when you mean, say, psychic sensitivity, I think you're uh -huh. talking about it the way I would use it, telepathy, clairvoyance. Right. Which are often seen as supernatural, paranormal, when really, again, I would like to explode that false dichotomy that separates the body from the psyche and say, yes. no, those are the natural powers of our bodies. Mm -hmm. And that's what, yeah. Mm -hmm. But when we live in a world which is full of injustices everywhere we turn and, and we blind ourselves, we say and think that this is normal, that there's nothing we can do about it, right. that's one of the ways in which we close down. That is one of the ways we close down and certainly that myth comes to us all the time that we're powerless, that we cannot influence fate. But I would suggest that we become fateful, which is aligning ourselves with the fate. See what the signs of the times are mm -hmm. and try and put ourselves in balance, working yeah. for justice. Mm -hmm. And then I think you begin to discover a different kind of power. The ancients also knew about chaos. Mm -hmm. The Gorgon was chaos. She had, can I tell you a little mythological story? Yes, I mean, indeed. the Gorgon, you again get this fragmentation. The Gorgon was the same goddess as Athena, who was the owl-eyed Athena. Mm -hmm. And um, they split her off, and ma they make Athena basically responsible for the death of the Gorgon, which is really just cut off that deeper side of yourself, yeah. cut off those powers of death, cut off your knowledge of the cycles. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you look at like the latest image from the Lorenzo tractor, I'm not sure if, but from the image of, the, it's the face of weather, the random mm -hmm. pattern, the, the irregular pattern of weather, the chaotic pattern. Yes. It's not irregular at all. It's absolutely beautiful. It's the face of it. It's, it's owl eyes. Or a butterfly. Or a butterfly. Yes. I see the owl eyes and I think this is what the ancients, if you go to Ireland or to Malta, you see these spiraling mm -hmm. eyes. In ancient Egypt, the great goddess was known as a spiraling eye. And this, we should say, is one of the fundamental images of chaos theory, which Absolutely. is a, a new area of science, which is beginning to give us some inroads to explaining things that were previously thought to be inexplicable. Inexplainable, horrific, ugly, kind mm -hmm. of like the face of the Gorgon. What chaos theory is saying, don't be afraid of the dark. Look into the face of what, pop, what mainstream culture has told us is mm -hmm. fearful, hideous, mm -hmm. monstrous. And you'll see that it's beautiful and it's a completely different kind of order. Mm -hmm.